Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you guys are enjoying Halloween Horror Nights week thus far. It has been amazing. We've gotten videos from Rob. We got videos from Sammy. We're getting videos from Hayes. Today is my video, and today I thought I'd do something special for y'all. Now, we all know that there is a scare zone coming to Halloween Horror Nights this year. One that I think I am the most hyped for compared to all the scare zones, and that is Luchadores Monsteros. Now, Luchadores Monsteros was heavily inspired by the man we are going to be talking about today. But I want to take a moment and just, just share my excitement for this scare zone. I am a massive wrestling fan. Lucha Libre wrestling is huge in the wrestling world. It's been going on since... Before wrestling was even televised, it was something in Mexico that was huge. And you're going to hear that in today's video. Uh, so the fact that they are capitalizing on the popularity of wrestling and the idea of Lucha Libre fighting monsters is a huge W in my opinion this year. So I cannot wait to go through that right after Monster Rose 2, the nightmares of Latin America. Cannot wait for that. But... Let's dive into today's video, what you guys are all here for, to get you more of an idea of what this scare zone may incorporate, may be like, may pay reference to, uh, and that is the man, the myth, the legend himself, the Mexican Superman, and the godfather of Lucha Libre Wrestling, Rodolfo Guzman Huerta, aka El Santo. Now, El Santo was born on September 23rd, 1917 in Mexico, and uh, he spanned a five-decade career of wrestling, film, and just being an icon throughout Mexico. Now, that is insane and unheard of in the world of wrestling today. I mean, you've seen a lot of guys st stay in the business for as long as they can, wrestle in the business, that is, as long as they can. El Santo was wrestling. He was in film and he was just being overall an icon in mexico i don't think there's no one in mexico around that time even to this day that doesn't know who el santo is uh the best way i can describe el santo to you guys as far as popularity goes right here in the states would be of course the equivalent to the real Superman and uh, in, in wrestling terms, the equivalent to Hulk Hogan, how Hulk Hogan was this giant icon in the 19 late eighties, early nineties for uh, wrestling here in the States. Uh, El Santo was the same way out in Mexico for that. So I thought that was really cool. I, I had never heard of El Santo prior to this announcement of this scare zone. Uh, Sammy actually brought it to my attention. And uh, that night we went to go talk, uh, go see Deadpool Wolverine with our buddy Miguel and I had asked him who is a massive fan of Santo uh, and he told me all about it and he told me I should watch some of these movies and I asked some uh, co-workers at work and they told me all about El Santo and I looked up some of the movies and they're actually for as cheesy as they are they are some of the greatest movies I've ever seen in my life uh, as far as wrestling movies go because Man, El Santo has fought them all, and we'll, we'll get into that, but let's get more into the history of, of El Santo and Lucha Libre Wrestling in Mexico. Um, he had a comic book also that lasted 35 years, and now this was before the time of movies and TV and stuff. Uh, comics were a huge thing out in Mexico. This is where um, a lot of people connected with El Santo as a character. Um, and when it finally came time for the new era of TV and film, El Santo was on the center point of that. El Santo was in all these movies, all these like f films, talk shows, all that stuff. El Santo was the man, was like the first big megastar to come out of Mexico. El Santo was the first proper Mexican superstar to be signed to the first proper Mexican promotion. Now, this came around... I believe uh, in the 30s when uh, uh, a man came in and made an actual promotion, much like you were starting to see pop up little by little in the States with territories and stuff. This man made a structure, a uh, way to make wrestling a more uh, weekly or more like common thing 
to see. And El Santo was the first star signed, so he was the first major superstar to be signed to an actual Mexican promotion. Now, I'm not saying every other promotion was not legitimate. There's the indie scene, so at the time they could have been little independent promotions in all these territories. This was the first major promotion within Mexico and to this day is still in Mexico as the current longest running promotion of all time. I think the name has changed since then, but it's still uh, under the same kind of roof and, and era and just vibe of what it all what's always been um lucha libre is very sacred in mexico as far as the mask goes the mask is a very sacred um tool used in lucha libre and you you some people have to earn their masks uh and once you take that vow of wrestling in that mask you're not supposed to take it off uh example that's very popular in the world of wrestling today ray mysterio is well known for that has not taken off his mask since he started with the WWE. Uh, I know in WCW he wrestled without his mask, uh, and that was prior to him putting on the mask. He has wrestled with the mask in WWE ever since his start. So uh, that is a perfect example of Lucha Libre wrestling. There is tons other out there that are legends in the business that you can honestly research because this is some of the funnest wrestling you will watch, some of the most athletic wrestling you would watch. Um, and I just absolutely love everything about Lucha Libre wrestling. A wrestler in a black mask named El Emascaro, translated the Mask Man, introduced the mask concept to Mexico City, which elevated the form in a more simple but more mythical way. Now, this was uh, a way for El Santo to finally debut his mask. Now, once he saw this guy uh, wrestling with the mask prior to this promotion, prior to all that, this is how he helped develop his character, El Santo, with the mask and everything. It was because of a, a, a wrestler named... Um, Ella Mascaro, and uh, it was he was honestly a, a wrestler in a black mask, but it was an American wrestler. Uh, however, the mask did start something and elevated something that it would carry on for legacy for more to come. In 1942, El Santo debuts, and El Santo translates to the saint. El Santo finally debuts in the wrestling ring in 1942. His brothers are also famous wrestlers that actually created a lot of iconic wrestling moves that are still used today in wrestling, so I thought that was really cool. Um, and to find out that his name translates to the saint is a more symbolic thing for him being part of the people, kind of being that saint to help be the good guy essentially in wrestling, the face of wrestling. Um, and El Santo was nothing more, nothing less than the face of an entire country at one point. So El Santo was famous for keeping his identity a secret until the day he died. I thought that was interesting too. Lucha Libre, like I said, is a very uh, sacred thing for a lot of people that are in the business of wrestling and choose to take that path. Uh, and so keeping the mask on is very sacred. El Santo did this up until just about his death he never took off the mask in public and there were even people at times trying to get pictures of him in his house or anything but then he would trick them he would wear the mask while showering he would wear the mask while doing just absurd things that you would not need a mask for and i thought that was pretty funny doing that research is like paparazzi trying to get him without a mask but he kind of outsmarted paparazzi and, and kept that secrecy and that and that sacredness of the lucha libre mask uh luchas d Apuestas matches were his signature, which translates to matches with wages. He would always put his mask on the line in these matches. So that basically showed you how prideful he was and how sacred that mask was to him that he would go about to um, have those matches constantly with people. That was actually a, a staple match he would always have is putting his mask on the line. Like if he lost, then he'd take off his mask or... Um, you know, he would always go over and beat the people and beat the guys and stuff. But because of this, his legend would grow. And by that, he would wrestle so many iconic people. Uh, Eddie Guerrero's, I believe, grandfather uh, was one of the per people that he got to wrestle in, um, in, in, in this time, which I thought was really cool. And, and to see that and a lot of iconic Mexican wrestlers that... Uh, became the stuff of legend with Santo and, and became amazing rivalries and all that stuff. I thought this was like just really cool information. Being a wrestling fan here and all this is really cool. And through his films, and Santo became the symbol of both justice and decency 
and Mexico. I uh, I really thought that was interesting, especially if you watch some of these movies that he does. He films a lot of them with uh, monsters. And you'll start to see that in a little bit. Within his 25 years of Don Santo, he made 50 films, which sometimes in, uh, included his partner, the Blue Demon, uh, as well as his other... Uh, he had a couple partners that he'd bring in and out of these movies, but majority of the time he was the star of all of them, and these characters would come and help him a lot. Santo would fight a lot of the monsters and well-known horror figures. So you got to imagine back in these days, obviously we were making the monster movies out here on in, in the States, and I remember that they actually did a shot-for-shot shot remake of Dracula in Spanish. Uh, they shot that at night. They shot English Dracula during the day, Spanish at night. And it was literally the same script, everything, shot-for-shot, shot, same sets, all that stuff. So you got to imagine, like, take that concept, right, and put them up against a Mexican icon such as Santo. And El Santo would... I mean, some of these movies are just, this is the, my favorite part of these movies, is the fighting in these movies. It was some of the most cheesiest fighting, but it's so good. Like, it really is. It, it really is such a fun time just watching these movies, watching him kick everyone's ass, his buddies coming out, helping him. It was just so bad that it's good. But I, I absolutely loved everything that I've seen of these movies. I've seen him fight zombies. I've seen him fight mummies. I've seen him fight the Wolfman. Frankenstein, you name it. I've seen them fight them all, and it's just, it just, they keep topping each other. Like, I don't know how it keeps getting better and better, and, and it finds a way to do it. But they figured out a way out in Mexico to take those monsters, those iconic characters, and put them up against their iconic character, which was Santo, uh, and who would win in that fight. So, obviously, the outcome would always be Santo is victorious. Um, however, I really dug this concept of them kind of taking America's symbols and putting them up against their Superman, their symbol, which was El Santo. And uh, I thought that was just such a funny concept, uh, a cool concept. And uh, yeah, check out those films. They're on YouTube. You're going to love them. In September of 1982, El Santo would go on a farewell wrestling tour due to complications with his body. So he decided to take it upon himself. He wanted his fans to see him wrestle one last time. And on his last match, it was a four on four tag match with Santo, the blue demon, uh, all, you know, all his buddies and his greatest rival and a bunch of other bad guys. El Santo would walk out victorious in that match with his team. And that would be the final match ever for El Santo. I think my stuff is glitching and it's kind of freaking me out a little bit. But uh, yeah, that is a little trippy. Ladies and gentlemen, Halloween Horror Nights Week 2024 is sponsored by Dubby. Thank you so much for Dubby for uh, allowing us to be a part of this family. I've been drinking Dubby now for a few years. Um, and it's been just a really, really good drink. No crashes or anything with 10 different flavors, two caffeine-free flavors, and a bunch of other ways for them to have that ultimate energy drink taste. Now, not only do they have all their energy drinks on their site, like the powders, all that stuff, but they also include shaker cups, and they got a ton of merch. That is a lot of fun. We're going to be getting our hands on some of that merch really soon. But, yeah. Use code Knights of Horror for ten percent off your order. W.gg. Check out their store, all their amazing products. But let them know Knights of Horror sent you, and use that promo code Knights of Horror for ten percent off now. For your regularly scheduled program, Asanto would make one final public appearance on a Mexican talk show where he briefly, for the first time ever in his career, very briefly, showed his identity. And uh, when I say brief, it was very brief. He literally lifts up the mask for a few seconds and then puts it back down. Sadly, the very next day, much like um, more recently that we saw with the Ultimate Warrior, he would pass away of a heart attack uh, on February 5th, 1984. Santo uh, would go down to have the biggest funeral in Mexico's uh, history. Uh, everyone came out and celebrated the life of Santo. They all showed the love and appreciation that all the joy that it, Santo had brought to all these people all these years. And as a wrestling fan, just kind of hearing his story and just hearing 
who he was, man. I, I'm a fan of El Santo. I, I, I respect the hell out of him for going out there, uh, being a comic book, being involved in the wrestling scene, and honestly, probably being a huge pillar into changing the Lucha Libre uh, wrestling scene forever. Um, going on to making 50 films with him as the star in them and just being an overall icon and a Superman and a role model and, and someone for the kids, even adults to look up to. Uh, Santo truly was uh, one of a kind and uh, he is incredibly missed uh, forever in the world of wrestling and just in general for anyone who's a fan of El Santo. Now, let's talk about today. El Santo's legacy somewhat lives on. Luchadores Monsturos, the new scare zone for Halloween Horror Nights 2024. Now, if you guys attended Midsummer Scream or watched that panel, you know John Murdy had come out and said that Santo was a huge inspiration for the uh, design and uh, creation of this scare zone. Uh, him and the team got together, and this was a concept one of his people were throwing at him constantly, and they finally went through with it. They did their research with El Santo. I cannot wait for this scare zone. You got two good guys, and you got a lot of bad guys, and this is going to be epic. From the construction footage that I've seen thus far, of all the props out, they actually have a mini ring out there. This is going to be incredible, and this is such a huge represent representation of what El Santo stood for. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I was in the middle of editing my El Santo history of video right here. As you can see, we're working on it right now. Um, and I remember recording this video that um, PC crashed as I was recording it, so like it cuts off. Uh, but basically what I was going to pretty much wrap up and say was... Um, this is all good. This this scare zone is a great representation of who El Santo uh, was, what he did, and everything. Just a little bit of a, a horror element touched to it, a more original element for Halloween Horror Nights uh, aspect of it. But I am super excited for this scare zone. Uh, I was watching a lot of the behind-the-scenes walkthroughs of Monsteros. They did some press tours today, and they said a lot of the cast for wrestling fans so a lot of them are practicing some really cool stuff which makes me m even more excited for this scare zone um but all in all i i can't wait to go through luchadores monsteros and uh yeah i i think doing this video taught me so much and more love and and respect for the lucha libre lucha libre culture um, it, it was really cool to learn about Santo, learn about his influence in Mexico, and learn about everything that he was involved in from comic books to wrestling to movies, TV shows, talk shows, you name it. If it was something huge in Mexico, Santo wasn't part, uh, involved with it. So this was a fun video for me to make. I really enjoyed it. This was a, a twofer, horror and and wrestling for me, so that that's, that's always a fun one. But let me know what you guys thought about El Santo. Uh, leave your comments down below. I'd love to read them. Um, and some other interesting facts about Alan Santo that I probably did not mention in this video, but are interesting because this guy had a very, very interesting life. Uh, be sure to stay tuned tomorrow for, I, I believe we are doing um, Sammy's ranking of the Universal Monsters. So stay tuned for that. And then we have the game plan and our hype list and uh, so on and so forth for Halloween Horror Nights week. See you guys very soon. Love you guys. Stay spooky.